Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here on Procreate 5X. This is the last chapter on all of the new features that are rolling up with this latest update. So for today's video, we're going to be looking at reference options. We're going to be looking at the new quick menu, scribbling with text layers, palette capture, swatch drop, move tool, copy canvas, and other things as well. So there's quite a bit to cover here guys so let's get started because as you know i like to not only show you guys these options but what are the best use case scenarios giving you guys some examples for these new features so without any further ado let's get to it so the very first one we're going to be taking a look here in the actions menu there's a new option right here now called reference and what reference does as you turn it on it gives you a mini map of your illustration which is quite handy because you can be like very uh, you know you can be very zoomed in on a certain section of your illustration and you can still see the whole picture right here and you're also able to relocate this mini map to whatever you want on your canvas and it doesn't have to be just that it can be like a reference for other images as well as you can see we got three options here so if I tap on image and I tap now on import I'm just going to choose a image, a uh, totally random one. Let's just say one of my old illustrations right here. So then I can have this reference. I can also zoom in onto this reference and kind of use it as I work on my illustration. So reference uh, option here, really, really cool for two reasons. One, it can be a full on display, say like of your current illustration, you're zoomed in on a certain section, but you can see the whole picture on the minimap. It can also be an actual reference uh, of photos of images or uh, things that you need to create your current illustration. And we also have this face option here, which at this point, I'm not really sure like the actual applications, but jokes aside, I know that there's a lot of AR designs that are coming up. There's a lot of artists uh, doing stuff on Instagram, becoming uh, filter designers. And you, what you can do here, you can design uh, face paint masks. So masks that don't have a lot of like meshes of 3D meshes, but they're more about how you paint the face and how you uh, create sort of like makeup filters it's actually like a, almost like a new a whole new avenue for designers who are now filter designers well, let's just continue so i'm just going to close here reference layer and uh, the next feature that i want to show you is that we're going to be creating some text right here so i'm going to just scratch that and as you can see i'm already using scribble to use my text layer text menu has been kind of revised so now you have a more of a way more concise actually menu instead of that like really like big thing that used to be here at the bottom section of procreate 5 so i'm just going to try writing here hello oops okay let me scratch this h so you can erase letters you can do like all sorts of things now with this feature let me select the whole thing because I actually want this to be a little bit bigger. So let me just see what is the best way. I guess we have to go back into this menu here just so I can increase the size. And I'm also going to drag this, increase the size again. I'm actually going to roll this back quite a bit. So as you can see, we still have like a lot of these same options. We have a uh, you know outline version. Uh, this is actually quite interesting. There's a vertical alignment now, underline, and all caps version. So I'm just going to apply this and move this up. So basically, the new feature really is that now we can use we can also use Scribble to edit text layers. So you don't have to really be using your keyboard anymore, and you know getting that like really bottom menu, which is quite big here. So if you have your typeface set up, you have your size set up, you can just be very quickly editing these features, editing text by just using Scribble. Same can be said actually for layers as well. So when you're trying to name, to rename a layer, you can also use Scribble right here. So test, just renaming this layer to test, and there you go. So Scribble has now fully entered uh, the world here off Procreate so that we can uh, actually keep working with the Apple Pencil instead of having to stop, rest the pencil, go on keyboard here. 
then uh, back on the pencil and continue working. So they're trying to make the process as fluid as possible. So now next feature, let's talk about palettes. And first thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna rasterize this layer here just so it's a little easier for us to all see. And we're gonna head into the palette section. So as you guys remember, we, we do have a great tool called color dragging. And you know, it's based on selecting a color at the very top right, but then we have to drag that color all the way to the bottom. Sorry, it's still quite slow here. I do have to say as this being beta, uh, it's not like super optimized in terms of performance, but I'll try to show you uh, as best as I can. So as you can see, color dragging um, is the, you know, the action of dragging this color that is right there at the top right section all the way down to sections of your image and is able then to fill with a certain color threshold. Although this process is quite repetitive and it is at the very top of the UI and then bringing that down. And I think this is one of my favorite things here because we can now use our color palettes and as long as you can just tap hold and you can drag this color right here, you're already painting without having to select the swatch that is, a, the, a, that is at the very top right. So I just wanna show you something very quickly. You can also have a floating color palette and I'll do the same thing. So we're just gonna drag this color here and paint this letter O. The only thing that I wanna say here, guys, as, you know, as, as great as this is, this is such a great feature to be able to be so much faster on dropping colors onto the canvas is that it's a little bit different um, just to show you something, in the case of the, the top right color here, you don't really have to linger. You just drag that color down and you drop that color onto the space you want to paint. The only difference here by uh, using the color, color swatching as a dropping color is that you can just like quickly do this because it's, as you can see, it doesn't work. You have to tap and hold and then you drag it into the space. And although this sounds simple, like I bet that there's going to be like a few users they're gonna be quite confused on like how this is so quick and, and you know speedy to actually drop these colors in. Whereas here you do have to drop and uh, you have to touch and hold and then you have to drop that color into the section. This is just something for you guys to remember. Another really exciting addition now for color palettes in Procreate 5X is that now we have a few more options on how we can create these new palettes. We can create new color palettes just by inserting the values, by just creating a new color palette here, we can create it from a photo. So now we can use the camera on your iPad and kind of scan the room. You can go outside, take pictures, be inspired by anything that you see. And the, uh, you know, Procreate tries to actually create a color palette on the fly for you with two options. It can create from the overall tone of the image and it can also create a color palette from index numbers, which I believe it's going to be a little bit more friendly for web design applications. You know, people who are actually working with the hexadecimal values of colors. We can also create a color palette from photos. So if I use this crystal right here, I, you can see that actually it tried to capture all of the values uh, that I've used on that illustration and created a color palette. This is so helpful. For example, if you're creating illustrations that have a similar theme, have a similar uh, set of colors. You don't have to be bringing those in and kind of using the eyedropper tool. Like I was actually doing quite a bit of that and it's so time consuming to be, you know, if you don't have that color palette saved, you have to go and have to pick those colors. Now I can just get the average color variation from those illustrations and try to create more illustrations that follow the same color uh, family. Next up, let's talk about the new move tool. So move tool right here. Also, this is very great. We can now zoom back without actually having to, it's not scaling uh, you know, with a pinch zoom. Uh, I think this is already set up from default, so we don't have to go into the actions menu and make sure that that's set to on or disable so that we can do this. I just, I think this is a, a really great thing from the get go. And two things here to note on, um, on this new transform tool is that now, it's really great how, it, this is a feature how it used to be before on Procreate 5. We can move things, but there wasn't a lot of snapping uh, other than you know the horizontal snapping or vertical snapping. But now when we tap on snapping, we can also turn magnetics and snapping itself. And we can have velocity and distance. So what are these sliders? What is snapping? So snapping is when you're moving, 
Now when you're moving your canvas is detecting the boundaries of your canvas. So now I can align my illustration to the very left edge of the screen. So if I undo this, I just want to make a copy and I want to show you guys something. So align it to the left edge. And now if I bring this, this one right here, align it to align it to the right, I can then start to create, I'm just going to close palettes here. I can start to create what we know as a uh, seamless pattern. So a little while back, I've made a tutorial on how to actually create seamless patterns in Procreate and you had to actually draw some grids. You had to have some rulers in place for you to actually create these seamless patterns without actually screwing up the alignment of pixels. But now with snapping, this is just so, so much easier. And the last thing that I want to mention is that distance and velocity are basically distance is how much of this magnetics is going to be uh, actually detecting. So the bigger the, the distance, the faster you're going to actually lock in into this, uh, th these coordinates and the smaller the distance, you have a little bit more play until you actually uh, feel that is actually trying to align to the center points or to the edge points as well. Finally, you have two rotation methods now. You have the top one, which does by 15 degree degrees increments, and you have the bottom one, which seems to be doing 90 degrees. I've been trying to like, you know, rest one finger onto the canvas, that's not doing much, or two fingers, and that's not really doing much. Um, I do think that this, this is also a really cool addition, that if you drag this, uh, this handle out, I believe is uh, is it giving more sensitivity? I'm not too sure, guys, but I do know, and I really like that now we have two rotation handles. One is going with 50 degrees increments. Bottom one seems to be going with 90 degrees increments. It's always good to have a little bit more control whenever you're trying to use transform on your layers. Next, let's take a look at the new quick menu uh, options here that we have on Procreate 5X. So I do have my quick menu activated with a touch and hold onto the canvas. And, you know, we have the six options that we used to have on previous versions of Procreate. In those six options, you can also tap and hold and select any other actions that you may like. And those even include selecting your favorite brushes. So you can have two of your favorite, favorite brushes, six of your favorite brushes, or you can have new layer, uh, you know, uh, paint and erase a couple of your brushes and so on and so forth. So really you can set your, you know, favorite way of working on Procreate by using Quick Menu and setting your six best options here. But what's really, really cool on 5X is now we have these, this option here in the center, which allows you to create more Quick Menus. So you can have, and I'm just going to be clicking here. I, I think in my first video, I said that you could create at least two, but now I have at least eight here quick menus and you can set your preferred actions so uh, where do i see this as a great use case for example you can have quick menu one for all of your sketching work for your storyboards and then quick menu two for all of your painting uh, part of your illustration quick menu three could be for the section where you're finishing your illustration so you can divide your quick menu and each time you have a quick menu, you have six options for that quick menu. So this is a really great addition that actually expands the world of productivity on your illustrations and also allow you to be organized as organized as possible. And our final thing here, guys, for this video is something that I've seen on Miko's latest video on, on his review of the features of 5X, which is actually sitting here on the actions menu on add. You have now this option, copy canvas. And why is this option such a cool addition on 5X? Basically, I'm not sure if you guys have tried or done this before, but as you have your illustration with multiple layers, I just created some uh, quick three layers here. And um, sometimes we actually want to have uh, everything merged as in one layer. And why is that? Well, maybe we want to go into hue and saturation. Maybe we want to start making some color tweaks to our illustration. And what many of us have to do is to you know select all layers, group them, and then you have a group, and then maybe you duplicate that, and now on the top one, we tap on it, we flatten it, and now we can finally go onto hue and saturation and start playing with the colors. So all that seems and is quite a bit of work, especially when we're dealing with lots of layers. 
In fact, sometimes we even have to go into the gallery page, make a duplicate of that illustration, go into the new copy, flatten that one, then copy that single layer onto our existing one. So if you guys have been using Procreate quite a bit, you probably know what I'm talking about. In any case, this is what I thought it was super cool. So now we have all of these layers. I'm just actually going to uh, drag all of, this all of these layers outside of the group and I'm gonna delete the group. So now we're gonna go back into the actions menu, select copy canvas, Procreate is gonna do its magic and now we're gonna uh, hit paste. And now Procreate has placed a layer here, which I'll, I'll just set it at the top, which has all of our elements all merged into one layer. So very quickly Procreate actually saw all of the layers made a copy, merge them, and allow that to be in the memory so that you can paste it back either onto a new file or onto your existing file. And with that, you can now play now with color variations, make color alts, and keep working on your illustration. So guys, as a final conclusion to this, to this review, uh, things may actually change even for tomorrow's version. If they don't, that's fine. But just letting you guys know that there was, at least from Procreate 5 on the beta section to the final release, there were many things that actually were quite different from the final build or for the released public version. So take it with a grain of salt if, if things move around, but if they do, we'll make another video showing you guys all that has been changed. So that's it for this video guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did a like, it would be super appreciated as well as make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss any of these tips and tricks, reviews and speed paint videos. And that is all for you to become a better digital illustrator. Now on the right side of the screen, there's more content for you guys to watch. One is my latest upload and the other one is a video that YouTube is recommending you to check it out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.